I played every Dragon Ball Z Budokai game. Here's my thoughts. Not to be confused with Budokai Tenkaichi, Budokai is a separate series of fighting games set in the Dragon Ball universe. While there are technically only five games with the Budokai name, there are actually eight Budokai games in total. Real quick, let me just say, I am so stoked and excited about all the support I'm getting on my channel. You are all awesome, and I'm so happy to make these kinds of videos for you. If you're interested in this kind of content, I've got a lot of cool stuff in the works, so I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing. Again, thank you so much. I'll Alright, let's get into the games. Dragon Ball Z Budokai released all the way back in 2002 for the PlayStation 2 and 2003 for the GameCube. When this game came out, Dragon Ball Z was still in its heyday and everyone was talking about it. So a Dragon Ball Z fighting game coming to the biggest consoles at the time was a no-brainer. Budokai, in my opinion, was the first really big mainstream Dragon Ball game. The game's intro video is a weird 3D recreation of the opening to the show. I guess this lets me immediately talk about the game's art style. The art style in this game is... Uh, strange. When you think of Dragon Ball games, you usually think of a very distinct anime-inspired style. This game hadn't quite found that style yet, though. Instead, it's 3D models without any kind of cell shading or outlines. It just kind of has this soft shaded look. It actually almost looks like the characters are made of clay. To be honest, I don't hate the look and it's super nostalgic, but it's also kind of jarring, especially when you compare it to the modern games. However, what it lacks in art direction, it definitely makes up for in style. The menus are fun and over the top. Every character has a wacky icon in the character select. Selecting a stage gives you a fun little preview of each stage when you hover over it too. There's all kinds of stuff like this in the game and I'll definitely be coming back to that. The gameplay in Budokai is a straightforward fighting game. You have punching attacks, kicking attacks, charge up attacks, and special moves. You can use the special moves by linking combos and activating the move at the right time, which is kind of janky, but you do get used to it. It's not like normal fighting games where you use directional inputs, but it also kind of is. For example, to use Kamehameha as Goku, you have to punch the enemy four times, then hit the energy attack button mid-combo. There's also other ways to initiate Kamehameha, but that's the simplest example I can give you. And of course, you have to have enough key to use the move in the first place, but it works out. Honestly, some of the combos are pretty awkward to do, but there's this rewarding feeling when you can finally pull a tricky combo off. There's also some transformations, like Goku's Kaioken and Super Saiyan forms, that when you activate them, they they slowly drain your key, but you get a big power boost and access to some extra skills. Every character also has an ultimate attack that they eventually unlock, and really it's just a super strong attack with an added flashy cutscene that plays in the fight. These are super cool though, and it's always fun to do them. Knocking an enemy outside of the stage's boundaries plays a fun animation where they go flying, and it's pretty flashy and a nice detail that I like to see, and they bring it over into future games too. The exception though is when you're fighting on the world tournament stage. Knocking out an enemy there is an automatic win, which is a great attention to detail, and I really like it. Every character has certain skills equipped, and you can customize those skills from the main menu, but I'll get into that. Budokai has a handful of modes. Story mode, dual mode, world tournament, practice, and the skill editor. There's also an additional unlockable mode called Legend of Hercule. The story mode covers the first few Dragon Ball Z arcs all the way through the Cell Saga. In general, the way the story works is that you get a general cutscene that follows the canon Dragon Ball Z story pretty much to a T, but it's broken up by direct fights and sometimes even little mini games. Again, it's pretty straightforward and gets to the point. The story mode is also how you unlock characters. Usually when you defeat a character in the story mode, you unlock them for use in other modes. A cool thing the story does here though is the what if episodes. Basically, they're little story episodes that aren't canon but cover what would happen in the story if it went differently. In the Saiyan Saga, for example, there's an episode where Vegeta wins the fight against Goku instead of fleeing the planet. I have to say I love the presentation here. Every new section is introduced like an episode of the anime. Before a fight, it does a zoom in on the character you're using, and the bottom text gives you a little snippet of what's going on. The cutscenes in the story are fully voiced and animated too, which is pretty cool, especially for a game this early. In fact, they went pretty hard on recreating scenes from the show, and it's super enjoyable to watch, even with the janky art style. Oh, and did I mention there's battle-specific dialogue? I'm sorry, gentlemen. 
If you know me, you know I love battle-specific dialogue. Dual mode is just a basic battle mode. There's multiplayer fights, player versus CPU fights, and CPU versus CPU fights. It's straightforward though, you pick your character, your enemy, and the stage you play on. World tournament mode is a pretty cool mode, and it's a staple to the series. When you start, you have to choose novice fights, but the ability to choose higher difficulties is unlocked for Zenny in the shop. After you choose a character, you're put on a bracket. From there, you fight to the top of the bracket. What I love about this mode though, is that the world tournament announcer is shouting the entire time. He announces the fights, he announces the winners, and I don't know, but something about this is so hype inducing. Winning the world tournament gets you Zenny, which is the currency in Dragon Ball. You can use that Zenny to unlock skills. The skill editor is super cool and I think probably one of the most iconic things about Budokai. You can create any kind of build you want for any character. The skill shop has a few different options for purchasing skills with Zenny, but unfortunately you never know what you're gonna get unless you purchase the super expensive recommended skill. Sometimes this recommended skill is a Dragon Ball and collecting all of them allows you to summon Shenron. Shenron allows you to choose a capsule for one of the three possible characters that's random every time. The capsule contains a skill called Breakthrough that allows your character to use any one of their skills at the cost of being unable to use any other item capsules, but it's usually worth it. The final mode is called Legend of Hercule. This mode obviously is from Hercule's point of view with all of his bravado. For starters, he gives you a big instructional and motivational speech. From there, you immediately go into the Cell games as Hercule and it's a gauntlet of fighting a ton of characters. I do love how he has dialogue and little comments about the characters he fights between every fight. Dragon Ball Z Budokai is iconic, and it's also the birth of a fantastic series of games. All of the things it introduced are expanded on and polished as the series goes on. It's a charming game, and while the new games do what it does better, I'm glad I got to experience a really big nostalgia hit from playing it. Before I move on, I do want to say one thing. This game also starts the trend of having these really cool interactive loading screens, which I absolutely love. In Budokai, it's a dragon radar that you can kind of mess with with the joystick. It's nothing super complicated, but it's still fun. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2 released in 2003 for the PlayStation 2 and 2004 for the GameCube. In my opinion, the intro to Budokai 2 is way cooler than the intro to the first game. It's fully animated in the style of the anime and has a really sick rock song playing in the background. Creating a new save game with Budokai 1 save data on your memory card nets you some items right away, which is a feature I love. The visual style of this game is greatly improved from Budokai 1 in my opinion. Just the addition of outlines and cell shading makes this look so much much more stylish and way less awkward. Plus, this is way closer to the style pretty much every modern Dragon Ball game uses, and it really works. One tiny complaint I do have, though, is that a lot of the wacky visual stuff from the first game didn't make a comeback. The character select is now just a wheel, and the stage select is standard options without any extra visual flair. Visually, the stages are a huge step up, though. I can't really put my finger on it, but they just seemed way more detailed and varied. The Snowy Mountain stage has this, like, snowy weather effect that really just adds to the atmosphere. They also brought back the stage transitions if you knock an enemy outside the boundaries, and they're way more over the top this time. The gameplay in Budokai 2 is almost identical to the first game, but improved in one major way. The combo system to use special attacks is still there, but you can now use standard button combinations to activate some of the signature moves. Goku's Kamehameha can now be activated by just holding down the right button and the circle button. This makes the game so much more fun and fluid to play, and it sets the standard for the rest of the series for Unfortunately. Ultimate moves do return, however, some of them now work slightly differently. There's now a little mini game you have to kind of play in order to maximize the damage you deal. Some of them even fail if you don't play the mini game properly. Speaking of mini games, there's also three fusion mechanics in this game. The first is the standard fusion dance, which requires you to input a random set of buttons properly. If you do it right, you get to use the fusion character for a limited amount of time. If you do it wrong, you're stuck as a worse version of that character until the fusion timer runs out. The second kind of fusion is the Potara Earring fusions. These, in most cases, just have you press a button and the enemy has to guess what button you pressed. If they guess wrong, the fusion is successful. If they guess right, they block the fusion entirely. No weird, skinny fusions this time. The last fusion isn't technically a fusion, but I still count it as a fusion. Super Buu has his absorption move, and he can absorb a ton of characters, including characters that he didn't canonically absorb. What's cool about this is that he gets access to a bunch of other characters' movesets when he does this, including Frieza and Cell. This is another case of the, they didn't have 
have to do this, but I'm really glad they did because it's really cool. There's also a couple of fun what if fusions in the game too, like Tiencha, but my personal favorite is Gokul. Not only is Gokul a playable fusion in this game, he has two different looks depending on which costume you use. Before I get into the modes in Budokai 2, I just want to say the loading screen in this game is Master Roshi spinning. Rotating the joystick makes him spin faster, and if he spins fast enough, he starts moving around. Anyways, the modes in Budokai 2 are Dragon World, Dueling, World Tournament, Training, Skill Editor, and Bobby's Spaceship, which you unlock later. Dragon World is the story mode in this game. The story here goes all the way through the Boo Saga, meaning we see a lot more characters, but compared to the first game, the presentation is significantly different here. Rather than going from story cutscene to battle over and over again, you now have a game board kind of thing where the map is littered with enemies and items. In fact, there aren't really any proper cutscenes, at least in the traditional sense. You begin in a pre-specified part of the board, and usually you choose an ally. Each character on the board, represented by a game piece, has a certain number of HP bars. Those bars are how many times that character can be defeated before they're removed from the board. Every turn, you have a limited number of moves you can make, which are indicated by the number above your character's head. When you've made all of your moves, the enemy piece makes theirs. Moving to encounter an enemy starts a fight, and winning that fight earns you various rewards, items, and playable characters. Sometimes the encounters have special modifiers though, like reducing your HP by half right at the beginning of a fight. Storytelling wise, this is a huge step down from Budokai 1. But really, if you're playing this game, you probably already know the story. The closest thing you really get to cutscenes is some of the encounters have dialogue beforehand, and the game maps might have some text boxes, depending on the characters involved and what part of the story you're on. Dueling mode is almost exactly the same from Budokai 1. You can fight against another player, a CPU, or have two CPUs fight each other. World Tournament also returns and functions the same as the first Budokai. The presentation is slightly improved though. The skill editor is back and functions, as you probably guessed, largely the same as the first games, albeit with some UI improvements. The shop is improved too and you can actually see what skill you're buying before you buy it, though the option to gamble is still there if that's something that you want. Also, you can edit your character's capsules directly from the character select menu now, which is super convenient. The final mode in Budokai 2 is called Bobbity's Spaceship. This mode is essentially a collection of challenges. The first is a survival gauntlet, the second is a single match where you have to hold out as long as possible against an unbeatable enemy, and the third is a game where you have to land as many hits as possible. The last game is one where you try to deflect as many key blasts as possible. Doing well in these modes earns you points, and hitting certain point thresholds unlocks items. It's straightforward and simple, but it's a lot of fun. My favorite one of these modes is honestly the key deflection one. I haven't mentioned this yet, but the Budokai games have a mechanic where guarding exactly when someone fires a key blast at you causes the key blast to deflect right back at them. You can keep doing this indefinitely too if the enemy blocks the key blast back at you. You can't mash the guard button though because the character will just deflect the blast away. This mode is really fun and it's a great way of practicing getting good at the deflection timing. Overall, Budokai 2 is a massive improvement over Budokai, at least in presentation. Budokai 2 is also, to my knowledge, the first time we saw what style the Dragon Ball games would take for their foreseeable future. I think the only thing Budokai 2 doesn't do better than the first game is the way the story is presented, but at the same time, I do like some of the ways they shook it up, plus the wackiness of some of the other elements like the fusion characters more than makes up for it. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 released for the PlayStation 2 in 2004. Creating a new save file in this one with a Budokai 2 save unlocks some stuff, including Bardock as a playable character. First things first, the visuals in this game are really nice. It's very similar to Budokai 2's visuals, but clearly refined. The cell shading to me is a lot more pronounced. I also love how animated the menus are. It's like a happy middle between Budokai 1 and Budokai 2. The menus are also really great just in general. I mean, I gotta say, I even love just the main menu in this game. I mean, just look at it. It's got a ton of personality. Gameplay wise, there's quite a few changes. In fact, they improved the gameplay pretty significantly this time around. For starters, you can now dash forward and backwards, whereas in previous games you would just do a short hop backwards. The key blasts can now be shot in a volley instead of just one at a time, and when someone has you locked into a combo and they're beating you down, you can now teleport behind them and end their combo prematurely. There's also a couple of new struggle mechanics. The first, called Dragon Rush, has you using button presses in this little mini game to avoid taking more damage. The goal is to not hit the same button as your opponent. If they press the same button, your attack doesn't connect. The other struggle is a straight up beam struggle of two beam attacks connect, where you have to rotate the analog stick faster than your opponent to push their beam back. There's also now a mostly invisible fatigue meter that fills up over time, and when it does, you're unable to move around or attack until you've regained control of your character. This game is way more cinematic in its fights too. It's not enough to detract from the gameplay itself, but it's definitely way more flashy than previous 
previous games. The way key and transformations work has also been completely changed. The best way I can explain the new key system is that there's now a sweet spot for your key. Let's assume that your sweet spot is 3 gauges out of a total of 7. When your key is below 3 gauges, it'll automatically recharge over time until you're back at 3. However, if you're above 3 gauges, it'll slowly drain back down until you're back at 3. You can still manually charge your key though by attacking and using the button input to charge up, but you don't have to worry about running out of key quite so much. Additionally, transformations in this game no longer drain your key over time. Instead, they stay active unless you let your key get really low and you get knocked down. I think this system is a lot more fun and dynamic and allows you to focus on just having cool fights instead of managing the key meter so much. It looks like they took everything they did with Budokai 2 as a base and worked off of it to make it better. It just feels faster and more responsive overall. The game looks good and feels good to play and significantly better than the first two games hands down. So before I get into the modes, let me preface this by saying that outside of the story mode, Budokai 3 is fairly similar to Budokai 2. The modes for the most part are identical and work exactly the same way. That being said, we'll still go over them. The modes in Budokai 3 are Dragon Universe, Dueling, World Tournament, Practice, and Skill Editor. Dueling is, as you probably expected, the same as the last two games. Player versus player, player versus CPU, and CPU versus CPU. The World Tournament returns and is once again identical to Budokai 2's. Skill editing is back again and this time launches the host. Otherwise, it's identical to Budokai 2's. Finally, for the story mode, Dragon Universe is interesting. At the beginning, you choose which character you want to use. From there, they all have their own separate stories. It's actually really refreshing. Instead of the focus just being on Goku, you can use a variety of characters. You fly around this big overworld map as the character you chose and there's all kinds of stuff you can interact with. There's plenty of staple locations from the series too, including Kami's Lookout, the Kame House, and all of the cities. When you visit these locations, you run into NPCs that'll talk to you and sometimes give you items and skills. Something that's really cool is that a lot of these interactions seem to be directly related to what's going on in the story. There's also random places anointed with question marks, and finding those gives you random items, including Dragon Balls. You can also find a Dragon Radar that makes it slightly easier to detect those Dragon Balls. While it does feel like you're wandering around the map randomly sometimes, especially if you're not looking at your Dragon Radar, there is a button that you can press that hints to where you can go that isn't listed on the map, usually in the form of this big energy signature somewhere on the world. The important map markers, though, are usually the big fights, and these progress the story. When you win fights, you gain experience. If you gain enough experience, you level up. Leveling up gives your character points that you can then invest into your stats. This means that every character you can custom build. The stats are health, key, attack power, guard, arts, which is the strength of special attacks, ability, which is how effective items are, and com, which is just how strong your character is when controlled by a CPU. Want to invest in nothing but HP so your character is basically a tank? You can do that. The story is mostly told through static dialogue, similar to how Budokai 2 did it. Between big moments in the story, there are expositional cutscenes where the narrator describes what's happening with shots from the show, but I still would have preferred to have traditional cutscenes, especially when some of the more important scenes are relegated to just dialogue. If you collected all seven and Dragon Balls when you finish the story mode, you summon Shenron and you can choose an item to unlock. The options here now also include something called Memories, which unlock voice clips in a gallery for the character you're using. What's really cool though is that when you finish the story mode, playing it a second time can unlock even more content. Unfortunately, some of this content is missable, but it's still great that it's even an option. Most of the extra unlockable content is actually expanded Dragon Ball Universe stuff like Super Saiyan 4 forms, Broly, and Omega Shenron. The final mode is an unlockable mode called Dragon Arena. Dragon Arena is a mode where you can fight an unlimited number of battles and level up your characters. You're given a long list of possible characters to fight and they're sorted by level. The higher the level, the more experience you get at the end. Of course, I instantly found a way to cheese these fights just by knocking my opponent out of the World Tournament Arena, but it's still a fun mode. Budokai 3 is definitely the best of the games I've played so far. It hits all the right notes and has a ton of replay value. There's something about this game that caused me to play it significantly longer than the other two as well. It's a great game and definitely worth a play, even nearly 20 years later. So there are still five more Budokai games to cover, and that's entirely too much for one video. So expect part two to be out in the next two to three days. If you like this kind of video and you want to see more, I would really appreciate it if you consider subscribing. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and have a fantastic day.